for the last 15 years, ever since I got my Pro Audio qualifications for Pro Audio Engineering and Sound Engineering, I've been a massive fan of Steinberg, their complete suite of audio processing, mastering, recording, mix down software. Steinberg's Cubase, Nuendo, Clean and Wavelab. I've been belted from here to kingdom come for talking about Steinberg. A lot of people saying just forget about it, backyard, use Audacity. Well, no, I'm using an industry standard audio processing software suite. It's Q&A and advice time plus viewer video request time again here at the Backyard Tech Channel. This one, how to set up VST presets in Wavelab 6. G'day everyone. Thank you for tuning in. It is Q&A and advice time plus viewer video request time again here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a Thursday morning and this is going out to a viewer by the name of Pen Narong. Guaranteed I've got that name wrong. Wants to know how to set up VST presets in Wavelab 6. Now I can tell you right at this point in time I've got all those who are screaming at me saying why am I bothering just use Audacity. No. I'm sick of people saying just use Audacity. I use Wavelab. I like Steinberg. Deal with it. So basically, his question was, and I don't really understand this, but he goes, how to preset VST in Wavelab 6? I have Wave All plugin bundle in Cubase, please. Okay. Um, I think he's missing a few words there, but basically, if you set a preset VST in Cubase, it should be available within your Wavelab plugins. All right, now I've got here, if I minimize that, there we go. I've got all these plugins, all right, which I use all the time. All right, whether I'm making an extended track, whether I'm making a uh, remix, for friends who are DJs, whether I'm extending, you know, radio edit seven inches out to 12 inch mixes, etc. In the VSTs, as you can see, I've got waves. I've got more there as well. Um, my my Wave Lab installs all up the spout, but there's a heap of um, plugins I use regularly. Okay, some of the ones I have used a lot of in the past, especially are these ones, especially when you you know you get a you get a track that needs a bit of a cleanup, you know, maybe it's a bit hissy or, you know, someone wants um, a track from a cassette. The cassette's got some nasty hiss and hum on it. So I use these a lot. Obviously, the parametric EQs as well. Um, some people may want, you know, add a bit of echo, um, maybe a bit more bass. Maybe the song's a bit tinny or the track's a bit tinny and needs a bit of bottom end enhancement. So what I'm going to do here is um, just grab one of, now I'm obviously not going to be able to play this, um, I want the mp3 don't I, there it is, so I'm not, I'm not going to be able to play it as, as you can see, but essentially the way to preset your VSTs in Wavelab, now as I said if you preset them in Cubase and you've preset them correctly, they should be available within Wavelab as well. Because as long as you've installed your plugin bundles in the same directory, right? So, for example, uh, you might have your VST plugins directory in C drive backslash program files x86 backslash Steinberg backslash VST. But if you've installed your VSTs in a different area, then those presets that you've set in Cubase are not going to be available in Wavelab because by default Wavelab's going to look at C drive backslash program files x86 backslash Steinberg backslash VST and if your Cubase VSTs are sitting inside Cubase's folder Wavelab's not going to see it so you've got to make sure that your plugin packs are in the same directory or the same folder all right let's assume they are available 
in the same folder. All right, you want to create certain presets for various plugins. All right. So we'll go for DirectX, and I want to enhance. What do I want to enhance here? Um, let's pick something I can. We'll go with Max Base. No, we won't. Pick something different. <laughs> uh, oh, what do we want to go with? All right, we'll go with R Base. All right. So here's R Base. All right, now if I start playing this, now I'm hoping there's no audio. There, there is not. Okay, so you can see the R base. So I haven't, I haven't done anything. All right, I've done nothing to the audio. So what we'll do now is we'll pick a frequency to intensify, say 63 hertz. So really get it going. You can see there, I've got the gain. All right, so say that's what you want to do. Okay, that is how you want to enhance your base. Okay. Now, it's awfully basic, believe it or not. It is phenomenally basic. Okay, so we're not going to change the gain. We've got the frequency. We'll bring that up a bit, I think. Uh, whoop, too much. We'll give it 11 dB increase on 63 hertz. So, as you can see there, it's clipping out. So, we'll just reduce the gain there a bit. Get rid of that clip. We'll bring it down by 4 dB. Oh, actually, no, we'll bring it down by 3 dB. All right. So it's hitting that top edge at minus 3 dB on a logarithmic um, meter. And you see there it's still clipping. So we'll get rid of the clip. We'll take it down by 3.5 dB. All right. Okay. So you want to preset that. Okay. For whatever reason, you want to preset that VST plugin in WaveLab. So you hit preset. And you can now type the name in. Uh, no, we'll call it uh, 63HZB Boost. All right. So 63 hertz base boost. Right. So we'll add that. We'll go OK. So the next thing you want to do, you might want to... Uh, let's see. We might... Um, we might widen it out, all right? Real stereo wide, all right? So you want to have it so that you can just pull up that preset anytime you want without having to actually do anything. Again, you go to preset and you go widen. We'll add that, all right? So now what we do is we get rid of all that. And we have none there. We have none there. We close that off. Okay. So we're starting from scratch again. Okay. Complete scratch. So you've opened up WaveLab. We'll go and open up whatever track it is. Um, recently or recent recent audio files. We'll grab that again. One of my favourite old school house tunes. Okay. So imagine this is a completely different track, um, and you've got about the same problem. All right. It's the stereo field's not wide enough. It, it, it's very in the middle, and you want some. You want to open up the stereo field a little bit, okay? Not a lot, or you want to open it wide out. So we come up to uh, VST. We come, sorry, stereo expander. We go to preset, and we go widen, okay? And that'll open it up. All right. Or we can go to our VSTs, or we can go to we're, we can go back to R base, and we can go preset, and you can go to 63 hertz boost, and you'll see there it's changed it, it's opened it right up, right. Now that's how you set your presets in WaveLab. But as I said, what you've got to do, and this is absolutely um, paramount. My computer's frozen up again. Hang on a moment. Yep, my computer's completely frozen up. Because, oh, no, there we go. Oh, <laughs> hang on a minute. Okay. So, <clears throat> what you need to make sure with your VST plugins, and this is paramount, all right? You, you, you have to make sure of this. C drive, program files. 
So you've got your Waves folder, all right? That's just all your programs. But your VSTs have got to be in the same folder. Now, if you've got Cubase VSTs sitting in some other folder, you're not going to be able to do it. So make sure your VSTs are in the same folder. Presetting VSTs is dead easy. In fact, presetting any of them is, is simple. You may want to, uh, you know, get rid of that. None. You may want to, you know, blow the hell out of the track and bring up your L2 maximizer, all right? This is your hard limiting system, all right? This is how you would uh, master up, a, say, a, a master track, right? You, you get it right up so that it, it, it's, it, it's at the max volume but giving headroom. All right, so we go back to here. We start this. You can see there it's... Uh, what are we what are we peeking at here for a moment? Yeah, it's a bit quiet, you know, minus six, minus five dB. All right, we want to get that hammering. So you bring up your threshold, you change your output ceiling. We'll give it an output ceiling of minus two dB. And let's crank it. Right up. Okay. So you can see there we've got an attenuation of nearly six dB. All right. 24 bits, the dithering's type 1, which is fine, and the shaping, we're not going to bother changing the shaping, all right? Now, you want to save that preset because you want to pull that up on any track you want without having to always fiddle around with specific settings. Again, you go to preset, you go to, um, what do you want to call it? We'll call it uh, heavy lit. All right, you add that. All right, so we've called it heavy limit, for want of a better term. All right, so now what we do is we basically close that and close that. Okay, so you, you've done what you had to do. You get another track, and you need to do the same thing to it again. All right, so you're back into Wave Lab. All right, you see there, we're all, all clear of everything. So we'll open up that same track again. As it opens it. We'll rewind the track. Okay, so you've got to bring up that same VST again, right? You don't have to bring up any of the effects, but your dithering's got to be the same. So you open up your L2. You can see there, your L2 is back at its default settings. Uh, you've got to go to heavy limit. You can see there, it's already done it. You apply it. Once you've got that set, obviously then you would render out the track. Okay? Because you've got to render it. Once you've edited it, you've got to render it. It's the same as doing a video rendering. So basically, to save your presets, once you've got them set the way you want them, and you can, you can use any of these as well. These are the standard WaveLab VSTs, you know, you've got your stereo echo again, you can, you know, uh, save an effect as you see fit. So once you've got your effects done, or you can edit the name of the current effect so that you've got it again and it'll save that current effect. So that's how you do it. It's, it's, it's very easy. But if you want to have presets between Cubase and WaveLab, you have to make... Oh, Hang on, God. Phone rang. As I was saying, if you want to have presets between Cubase and WaveLab for your, for your WAVs plugins, you've got to make sure the WAVs are in the same VST folder. Um, if they're not, then you've got to save each VST plugin preset on WaveLab and Cubase. All right, so it's pretty easy. Before we finish up, though, I'm going to justify why I refuse to not use Steinberg okay 15 years ago as I said I became a professional fully qualified recording engineer okay audacity is good but personally I don't think it's a pinch on a full audio production suite in comparison to WaveLab now, not only is WaveLab a two-track editing suite, it's also a full mastering suite. If you want to record 
You can master in Nuendo, you can master in Cubase, that's fine, and export it out to two track. But ordinarily, you want to master the two track separately. And that's why I use WaveLab. So, how do you save your presets? You hit the preset on the plugin, and if you want to share those presets between Cubase and WaveLab, make sure the VSTs are all in the same folder. All right? Hopefully that helps everyone out. Stick around. We've got a system setup and product review video coming up today as well. Also, a bit of garage sale tech and a bit of a poor man's repair as well. Until then, as always, we shall catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.